The Martin Scorsese gangster classic Goodfellas featured a character who only appeared on screen for a couple of seconds, but whose mysterious brief appearance and memorable name is always remembered by fans of the movie. So, who was Pete the Killer? Welcome to OC Shorts, bringing you detailed historical snapshots of the American Mafia and other organised crime. Feel free to subscribe if you like that sort of thing. Today we're going to take a quick look at Lucchese mobster Pete the Killer, a gangster who was very briefly portrayed in the epic movie Goodfellas. Just under 17 minutes into cinematic masterpiece Goodfellas, the camera works its way through a crowded bar as if from Henry Hill's point of view. After being introduced to a series of characters with interesting names, we come to a tall, imposing figure in a black suit, Pete the Killer, who mysteriously tells Henry, I took care of that thing for you. And then he's gone. But in the eyes of mob movie fans, he's never forgotten. But who was he? Peter Pete the Killer Abernanti was born in New York on July the 12th, 1912. His parents were Giuseppe and Giuseppe Nina. His father was from a town in Sicily called Ventimiglia di Sicilia, on the outskirts of Palermo. Although Sicilians referred to the town as Calamina. For the first part of Peter Abernanti's life, he lived with his parents in Little Italy, Manhattan, specifically at 184 Christie Street. The family did, however, move to East New York, Brooklyn, and lived at 573 Crescent Street. On November the 20th, 1939, Peter Abernanti, along with Salvatore Giuffre and Conte Pietro, entered the home of 85-year-old Joseph Metzger, who ran an insurance business. The trio held up the octogenarian at gunpoint in his home on 1337 Green Avenue. But the feisty old-timer wouldn't give in to the robber's demands. As one newspaper reported, Faced by a gun, the intended victim resisted. He was bludgeoned with the pistol butt and knocked down. His wife rushed to his aid and was knocked down also. But her screams frightened off the bandits. In a May 1941 trial, Conte Pietro pleaded guilty to attempted robbery and was sentenced to 15 to 30 years. His accomplices, Salvatore Giuffre and Peter Abernanti, were already serving sentences for other crimes outside of Brooklyn. Around this time, Peter Abernanti became a close associate of future mob powerhouse Paul Vario. And by the 1950s, both men were inducted into the Lucchese crime family. It is speculated that they were made at the same time. The pair were placed in the crew of Lucchese captain Salvatore Don Turudro Curiali. Born in the Agrigento province in Sicily in 1887, Curiali was powerful in the garment industry and he was a partner with family boss Tommy Lucchese in several businesses in this area. In Coriali's Brooklyn-based crew, along with Peter Abernanti and Paul Vario, were Don Terudro's son, Alfonso Fu Coriali, Luigi and Rosario Saccio, Paolo Zupaolo Diana, Salvatore Babe Vario, Paul's brother, and powerful and respected mobster, Joseph Joris Schiavo. It was Joseph Joris Schiavo who served as a mentor to Pete the Killer. He was also the man who sponsored not only him, but both Vario brothers into the Lucchese family, and at a later date, future acting boss and mob turncoat, Al Diarco. Joe Reese was a wise and wily mobster, who was the first American-born gangster in Salvatore Coriali's crew. It is believed that Joe Reese was made into the then Gagliano family in the 1940s and his only known arrest was for extortion in 1943. 
He would go into business with both Curiali and Tommy Lucchese in the garment centre rackets. Al Diaco would say that Schiavo was partnered with Tommy Lucchese in more than a dozen garment shops, as well as trucking firms and supply companies. Diaco would say of Pete the Killer's mentor, He knew the whole history of the mob. He could trace back the families to where they started and the wars they had. When Al Diaco was desperate to be inducted into the Lucchese crime family, Joe Schiavo would caution against this. He would try and discourage Diaco from wanting to be made. He told him, What do you want that for? This way you're not responsible. You can always say you don't know. Say you punch a guy in the mouth and he's a made guy. When you're made, you're responsible whether you knew or not. If you're not in the mob, you can just say you didn't know. Anyway, back to Peter Abernanti. Abernanti got his menacing nickname, Pete the Killer, for the sharp way he dressed, not his weaponry. Although it is believed that he was more than capable of putting in the work when required. Salvatore Corriale retired in 1960. Joe Reese Schiavo was offered the position of captain, but he turned it down and instead backed one of his protégés, Paul Vario, to be elevated into the position. In 1969, an informer and alleged Lucchese family member, Carmine Fats Tagliatella, stated that Peter Abernanti was present when he was inducted into the family in 1958. Tagliatella described Abernanti as Compari to the Varios. By the early 1970s, Peter Abernanti was living on Avenue J in Midwood, Brooklyn. In the February of 1974, Paul Vario was about to begin a two-year sentence for tax evasion, and it is believed that Peter, Pete the Killer Abernanti, became acting captain of the Vario crew. In August 1974, an FBI informant reported, Abernanti handles all Paul Vario Sr.'s operations since Vario went to jail and is assisted by Babe Vario. Abernanti reports to Tony Dux Corallo on 116th Street on behalf of the Vario group. Al Diaco also states that in January 1979, Pete the Killer was in Gefkin's bar along with Paul Vario, congratulating Tommy De Simone on his impending induction into the Lucchese crime family. But, as is well documented, this was all a ruse, and later that night, the unsuspecting De Simone was led away to his death. In September 1979, Pete the Killer's son, Joseph Abernanti, was shot at least 10 times in the chest, neck and head but miraculously survived. The New York Times reported, A 28-year-old Brooklyn man was riddled with bullets as he got out of his car a block from his East Flatbush home early this morning. The apparent victim of a submachine gun attack, the police said. The man, tentatively identified as Joe Abernanti of 2132 Shenekadi Avenue, was shot at least 10 times, according to the police who said that numerous shell casings found at the scene indicated that submachine gun had been used. Mr Abernanti, who was struck in the head, neck and chest, was taken to Kings County Hospital where he was undergoing surgery this morning. In 1982, it is also believed that Pete the Killer Abernanti was present at a dinner thrown by Paul Vario to celebrate the inductions of Louis de Dome and Al Diarco. After Paul Vario passed away in 1988, Al Diaco was promoted to captain of the Vario crew. And he says that it was Pete the Killer, then in his 70s but still running a small loan sharking operation in Howard Beach, who informed him that he still needed to meet one final crew member who was too old to leave his house. Mafia protocol demanding that the ageing soldier needed to be introduced to his new captain. Diaco said that Pete the Killer Abernanti then drove him to East 102nd Street in Canarsie to meet with 103-year-old Lucchese soldier Paul 
Zu Paolo Diana, one of Salvatore Corriale's original crew members. The ancient wise guy told his new captain, I am at your service. I am a little old, but I can still do this. He then held up his hands as if he was shooting a rifle. The following year in 1989, Peter Abernanti angered family boss Vicar Musso by ignoring his instructions to avoid the wake of Lucasia's associate Thomas Red Gilmore, who had been murdered in a family-ordered hit. Al Diarco recalls what Vicar Musso said to him. How come Pete the Killer and Rugsy went to the wake? Ask them if they like wakes. Diarco told his boss that Pete the Killer and Rugsy Vario told him that they hadn't heard the message. In 1990, Peter Abernanti and Peter Vario complained to Al Diarco that Sonny Bamboo was holding on to $100,000 of the deceased Paul Vario's money, which should belong to Petey Vario. After being threatened, Sonny Bamboo handed over the cash. Four years later, around July the 24th, 1994, Peter, Pete the Killer Abernanti, passed away from natural causes. He was 82 years of age. I hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching.